Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to see inside of your own eye. The weird thing about how our eye is built is the retina, the place where we receive the incoming light and turn it into a nerve signal, is at the very back of our eye. You'd think that you want the retina to be free of anything blocking the light, but that's not how it's built. The blood supply for the retina is actually right on top of it. So you basically have veins and arteries right in front of the place where we're supposed to detect all of our vision. The reason you can't see these capillaries right on top of your retina has to do with how we actually perceive light. The light receptors that are in our retina don't respond to a steady image. They only respond to a change in light. So that means that you can only actually see things that are slightly moving. You can't see anything that's standing still. So even when you're looking at a steady image, your eyes are actually shifting back and forth ever so slightly. This shifting of the eyes constantly is called saccadic motion and it's always happening. So it's the way that we're able to perceive images all the time, even though they're not moving. So because these capillaries are always fixed in the exact same position in front of our retina, our brain doesn't see it at all. It's completely blocked out. Our receptors don't even perceive the light. So I wanna show you how it's possible to see those capillaries in front of your retina. So this all started when one of my subscribers sent me this light bulb. They saw what they described as little tiny wiggly worms all around their field of vision when they were looking at the light. But the thing is when they tried to record it, it didn't show up on camera. So they sent me the exact light bulb in which they were seeing this phenomenon. And sure enough, when I plugged it in, I saw the exact same thing they described. What this light is, is a regular black light. So it's emitting a lot of UVA light, but it's also emitting some visible light, obviously because you can see that it's on right now. But on this white part where it diffuses the light, if you look at it, you can see these weird squiggly images, these images that are moving around like worms. Now you won't be able to see it on camera, but I'm gonna do my best to show what it looks like when you're looking at it. So I'm gonna animate an image on it of what it looks like to see what I'm seeing right now. At first I was stumped on what could be causing these wiggly worms in my field of vision. But then I noticed something. The worms were moving according to the beat of my heart. So as my heart beat, they moved. So that's what gave it away that I knew that it had to be related to the blood or veins or capillaries in my retina. Now this bulb mostly emits UVA light, which is invisible to us. But because you can see light on it, you know that it's also emitting visible light. And this visible light, a lot of it is in the 430 nanometer range. So it's kind of this violet bluish color. It turns out the red blood cells that are in your capillaries absorb 430 nanometer light. So what happens is the red blood cells are regularly flowing through your capillaries and they absorb the blue light. And so it creates these dark strings in front of your retina, which your brain edits out. But there are places on the retina where those blood vessels are extremely small. So small that red blood cells have to pass in single file through it. But your blood also has white blood cells. And white blood cells are a lot bigger than red blood cells. And the capillaries in your eyes are really small. And so those white blood cells partially block the capillary and cut it off from the red blood cells. So it creates a gap in between these lines of red blood cells. So now there's more light getting through where normally your brain's editing out a dark spot. And so what it appears to be is a bright spot. So as a white blood cell pulses through your capillaries, it creates what it looks like a bright spot moving through the capillaries. And that's why it moves to the beat of your heart. As your heart beats, it pushes these white blood cells through the capillaries and you can see those gaps of red blood cells as bright spots through there. It turns out this phenomenon actually has a name. It's called blue field entoptic phenomenon. Entoptic means that it's something that you see that actually is originating in the eye itself and not outside of it. Other examples of entoptic phenomena are the floaters that you can sometimes see in your eye and also Haydinger's brush, which I explained in a different video. But it turns out you don't need any special black light to do this. You can use other black lights, but you need to shine it on some white thing like a milk jug or something, something to diffuse the light. And as you look at the milk jug, then you'll see it. In order to see this the best, you need as close as you can to a monochromatic light source around 430 nanometers. It turns out that we have something pretty close to this, the blue sky. So you can actually see the same phenomenon if you look at a patch of the blue sky. Now it has to be a part of the sky where you don't have anything to focus on because if you have something to focus on, your brain will just ignore all these aberrations in your field of vision. These white blood cells moving through your capillaries that you can see are different than the floaters. 
We have probably all seen floaters before where you're looking at something, usually some blank background, you'll notice some just things floating across your field of vision that have different shapes and as you blink they'll kind of move around. With this phenomenon, the things that you're seeing are actually bright. They're brighter than the background and they'll actually follow your eyes as they dart around because it's contained on your retina. But with floaters, floaters are actually contained in the gelatinous mixture between the lens and your retina. And so they're actually in the liquid there. And so they can have lots of different sizes and they're actually going to be darker than the background. And also, if your eyes aren't moving, they'll kind of settle down. But if your eyes move around, then they'll speed up and kind of move around and then settle down. The ability to see the capillaries on your retina is actually called Shearer's phenomenon as well. It's named after an ophthalmologist that studied this phenomenon when he noticed it on a monochromatic blue light source. But if you're too lazy to try any of this, you can also do the same thing with a pen light like this. If you kind of just shine it across your eye like this, you'll notice that you can actually see blood vessels. Especially if you look far to the side like this, you can clearly see the blood vessels in front of your retina. Now in this case, the only reason that I'm able to see them is because I'm changing the lighting on them suddenly, so they're no longer blocked out. Because remember, you can only see something if it's changing. Let me know in the comments section if you're able to see this phenomenon by looking at a blue sky or looking at a black light. And I should warn you, don't stare at a black light for too long. It's litting off ultraviolet light, so that can damage your eyes. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also turn on the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a channel similar to this one, but I do my videos less than a minute long so you can get short and sweet science. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.